Hey everyone, so I'm here with Mishka, but I feel like she's probably going to jump away in a couple moments, but maybe she can help us introduce the topic today. So I checked my post box a while ago and there were a couple of uh, messages in there and I figured we're going to have a look at the contents of the first package today, which is from Adam. And he sent me a map of Tennessee, two of the Great Smoky Mountains. This here is a trail map. And one of the southeastern states of the US. Also with a couple of notes and some interesting remarks. I just want to say thank you very, very much, Adam. I really, really love these. And I also really like to dare a bit older and have a bit of a used look. If any of you ever think about sending me a map and you're thinking, ah, oh, it's maybe not in the best condition anymore, don't worry about that. Maps are there to be used after all. And maybe someone has some nice memories that are associated with these maps. So we're going to put this one aside for today and I'll keep it for another time. And we're going to have a look the Great Smoky Mountains and Tennessee. an official highway map. It says here, State Highway System current through January 1st, 2003. So it's 20 years old. fascinated about how Tennessee fits on this map. So it's a very long state, quite narrow, with these straight borders to the north and south, wearing Kentucky here in the north. And here's Virginia, North Carolina, and Georgia. Here's the border between Georgia and Alabama. Now we're getting to Mississippi, Arkansas, and Missouri. So we're in the southern states. We have Nashville here, down to the north, Clarksville, Jackson, and Memphis is all the way down here in this border area to Arkansas and Mississippi. And here we have Chattanooga, Knoxville, and this Johnson City, Kingsport and Bristol. Mm. 
Now, one thing that stands out is that we have a couple of rivers. So for one right here, the Tennessee and Kentucky Lake. And then over here, the border to um, Arkansas and Missouri is the Mississippi. And then over here, again, we have the Tennessee River. So it comes down here, takes a turn, and eventually comes back up in a northern direction. And then the border to North Carolina. where we find the Appalachian Mountains. Right here, this is where we have the Great Smoky Mountains National Park. But we also have a large green area here. which is the Cherokee National Forest. And then it continues here, all the way to the north. Again, Cherokee National Forest. The word Tennessee comes from an old settlement of the Cherokee, which was called Tennessee. It was abandoned in the 19th century, but today there's a memorial site there. I'm not quite sure where to find it though, in the area. In general, here around the Appalachian Mountains, you had a lot of uh, settlements by the Cherokee, which were eventually forced to move further west, partly to Oklahoma. But some groups managed to stay, and that's why we have the Cherokee National Forest here. And also, I'm just gonna turn this over, a Cherokee Indian Reservation right here. So we're already in North Carolina here. So the border runs right through the Appalachian Mountains. Settlements in the area go back either 12,000 or 16,000 years. I've found both, but a really, really long time. And maybe one oddity is the term for the Appalachian Mountains. Because this comes from a word that has its origins further south um, in Florida. In the early 16th century, there was a Spanish expedition that came across a settlement called something like Appalachie, Appalachian. 
it was noted down on the maps at the time and by the middle of the 16th century it was already applied to a relatively large area and eventually somehow traveled all the way north and became the name for this mountain range. In his note, Adam wrote that the Appalachian Mountains are very ancient and the original range extended from this part of North America across the continents all the way to what is now the UK and Norway. So that was back when the continents were fused together. He said to double check that though because he wasn't entirely sure and I haven't found a mention of Norway but I did see that the same rocks also found in the um, areas just north of the Danube so not too far from where I live and I thought that was really fascinating to think that a little bit of what's in the earth here can also be found right outside my doorstep So we have a couple of explanations here. Construction and weather information, an intelligent transportation system, rest and information, state and national treasures, it mentions here the Great Smoky Mountains National Park one of the best known and it houses an environmental biosphere unparalleled in North America. Also some information on the wars fought in Tennessee. It says here more battles were fought in Tennessee than in any other state. I thought it was a bit funny that right at the end of this paragraph says now you know why we say Tennessee sounds good to me. I would have put that here after the state and national treasures, maybe. We have a couple maps of Memphis. You can see this ring around the center cutting through here. We have Clarksville, Jackson. There's Nashville with the Cumberland River. And one of the, I guess it's a bald eagle. So the eagle probably most associated with the US. And here's another map of Chattanooga with the Tennessee running through to the lake. Knoxville. Bristol. Kingsport. And Johnson City. But 
this is the bird I find really fascinating. The Grey Smoky Mountains. This is really beautifully done. I particularly like this picture here. The forests on the hills with these clouds. It says here there are more tree species in the Grey Smoky Mountains National Park than in Northern Europe. 1,500 flowering plants, dozens of native fish, and more than 200 species of birds, and 60 of mammals. The mission is to preserve this natural and cultural heritage, unimpaired for this and future generations. Most of the park is now managed as wilderness. There's some background information again here. During the 1790s, white settlement began in the lowlands and climbed the hills as eastern farmland became scarce and commercial agriculture migrated to the Midwest. The eastern band of Cherokees now live on its reservation next to the national park. Most tribe members are descendants of those not forcibly removed in the 1830s. And if we look even further into history, we have a map of North America here, where we can see the last ice age, and how far down the glaciers reached. Not quite to the Grey Smokies, but it says cold ice age climates pushed northern plants and animals far south of the former ranges. When the climate warmed, these boreal species persisted in the cooler mountains on the spine of the Smokies. This ice age legacy it's remarkable biological diversity to the park. We have a couple of examples here. A red fox, a black capped chickadee, a ruffed grouse or grouse. There are wild hogs here. It says they were brought to a private North Carolina game preserve in 1912, but they escaped in 1920, and by the 40s they had spread into the park. Where they have rooted, the soil looks tilled. They damage native plants, historical landscapes and cemeteries, and compete with native animals for oak and hickory nuts. So, not a great addition to the park, but I guess it's difficult to get rid of them. We also have some bobcats here. A black belly salamander. Wood fern. A bird owl. Lady fern. A shell fungus. A pleasing fungus beetle. Red spotted purple, a butterfly, cute little chipmunk, and Christmas fern. And here we can see some fire in the background. It says that the Shirakis used fire to create farmland and to improve wildlife browse of hunting. White settlers followed their lead 
but vast fires after logging led to decades of fire suppression. We now know some plant communities need fire to reproduce, pine and oak forests require the light and bare soil fire provides. That's something you'll actually find in a lot of places on earth. The small patches are cleared by fire to be used as farmland, but then afterwards people would move on and leave the forest to come back. There are some more pictures here. As I tried to look up some videos of the Appalachians, and it is such a gorgeous place. With the forest is something that looks a little familiar to me. And these soft mountains here. But there's something just really bit magical about the area. There's also a photo here of Valini in 1888. It says here, long after the Trail of Tears, ethnologist James Mooney came to study the Eastern Cherokee who had managed to stay. He photographed Bellini here on the right on the Koala Reservation in 1888. Alright, and here we have a map of runs right through the center. We see here the border between Tennessee and North Carolina, right along the ridge, across the Thunderhead Mountain. This clean down at 6,600 feet or 2,000 meters. And right here it says we're following the Appalachian Trail, which runs from Maine all the way to Georgia. That's 2,200 miles or 3,500 kilometers. So you can see here, a couple of these trails are closed in winter. The Roaring Fork Motor Nature Trail, the main trail here through the center. Over here, Rich Mountain Road. We also have a couple of visitor centers. Kate's Cove Visitor Center, Sugarland's Visitor Center, or if we look to the other side, Okuna Lufti Visitor Center. I hope that's how you say it. We also have a lot of small rivers running through the mountains. Plenty of waterfalls in the area. And all kinds of creeks. In the south, we have some larger lakes. There 
this is um, Tidla Lake, Fontana Lake, Lake Chiowa, Calderwood Lake. And I'm guessing that they all follow the shapes of the valleys. With their elongated forms. could mistake them for rivers. So there's some information here on the different icons. Ranger stations, developed campgrounds, like right here, plenty of picnic areas, like right here, self-guiding trails, and you can also go horseback riding, you can rent horses for a couple of hours, and I really like this icon, it looks like the horses are going camping too with the little tent. However, you also have to be quite careful. So for one, the area is protected, meaning you can't feed wildlife and you can't pick any plants. This is subject to a $5,000 fine, which is quite a lot, so you know they're serious. And it's bear country. There are black bears here. So it's very important that you store your food properly. And we're going to switch to the other map for a bit. Because I saw there's actually a picture of a bear. There's some more detailed information here on how to move through the park. Leave no trace. What to do if you get lost. What to do if you need a toilet. If someone gets injured. What kind of hazards you might run into. And also what to do about water that you're going to need. This is the part that I thought was really fascinating. So you have black bears in the park with these big ears and round faces. And they are wild, of course, so they're Behavior is sometimes unpredictable, but attacks on humans are extremely rare, but they have happened, so it's important to follow these guidelines. You should always stay alert, and if you do see a bear, do not approach it. If the bear changes its behavior because of your presence, you're too close. So... The bear might demand more space, so don't run, but slowly back away. Try to increase the distance between you and the bear, and the bear will probably do the same. You can also try changing your direction if it keeps following you. And if nothing else helps, talk loudly or shout, and then they hopefully go away. What can happen is that bears are trying to go after food, so it's important to store it properly. And there's one example how you can 
hoisted up between two trees. So even if it were to climb up, it wouldn't be able to reach it. And then there's also some information on horse use. You can see some ponies here. Again, it's important not to leave them unattended, not to let them graze, not to let them go into the water. Any unused food should be packed away. And they should be cross-tied in a way so they cannot chew on or otherwise damage trees or other vegetation. So for me, the thought of riding through uh, a bear park is a bit scary, <laughs> but I'm sure that the area is well prepared for that. And the trails where you are allowed to use horses are probably away from where the bears are. So again, there's a detailed look at all the parts of the park. And here we also have some information on all of the waterfalls, like Rainbow Falls or the Falls Trail, Grotto Falls, Henwala Falls. Does Cosby Creek again? Again, here are the trails where you can use horses. There's an ice water spring. Indian Creek Falls. A stone pile gap trail. An Indian Creek motor trail. A Cooper Creek Trail. There's a trail along Fontana Lake that leads you towards Hazel Creek. Maybe you want to continue into Bone Valley Trail. The Parson Branch Road closed in winter and it's a one way street. The Beard Cane Trail, Hatcher Mountain Trail, Cooper Road, Abrams Falls, which are right here. And again, some information on unpaved roads, hiking trails, in separate horse and hiking trails. Really, really love the way the park looks. And generally, the landscape in Tennessee looks just gorgeous from the few glimpses that I've seen. So I hope you enjoyed this little exploration of the Appalachian Mountains. Again, Adam, thank you so much really really love your gift and I hope you enjoyed this video 
So for today, that's it. Thank you for watching and see you again next week. Good night.